Welcome to a very fancy episode of The Loop Show. Huzzah! Hang, Hang on, on for, for the, the loop. loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. I am Ricky. And I am Jemmy. And you, sir, oh madam. Are you? But who are you? Are you a gentleman or gentle lady such as ourselves? Are you interested in the finer things in life such as sports and literature? Do you enjoy animals of the puppy variety and or digital video games? Have you sampled the delicious exotic foods like caviar and meat cake? If we hired a listman to list all things you, what would they say? Yes, if we were to hire a mapsman to map out all the interesting things that make up your identity, what point of interest would we find? Hmm. hmm. I, I wonder. wonder. One thing that we know. Of which we are sure. You are a work of art. You are a masterpiece. Someone should put you in a museum. Like this. Hey Loop Show, it's Reagan. So nice to meet you. I am so excited to be here with you today. I'm a little bit about myself. Let's see, I am 5'6", I have brown eyes, and I like coffee. Do you, do you feel like you know me now? Probably not, right? Whenever we describe ourselves to people, it's like weird because you can talk about things that you're interested in, you can describe what you look like, but ultimately they're still not gonna know who you are just by listing off a couple of facts. If you had to make a chart, right? It said, this is Abby, this is Chris, this is Maddie, this is Josh. And you had to list attributes about yourself to describe. Would you say, I am made up of a bunch of atoms. I have bones. I am this tall. I was playing this sport. I like this instrument. My favorite flavor of ice cream is strawberry, whatever it is. If you like strawberry ice cream, we would be friends. So let's say that you do choose to describe yourself based on what you do. What happens when those things aren't true anymore? If I only describe myself based on the things that I do or what I think that I'm worth, eventually those things are gonna fall away. So what is something that we can describe ourselves with that will last forever? I think you might already know the answer. Our relationship with Jesus is something that is going to last forever. This is a relationship that isn't gonna change like the way that we play sports or the height that we are, how many friends that we have. We can describe ourselves to others by our relationship with Christ because we get to describe who we are based on who he is. There's a lot of things in this world telling you who you are. There's quizzes online saying, which movie are you most like? Which character are you? There's so many things trying to guess and tell you who you are, but there's really only one truth. You were created by God to look like him and to walk with him. And that is the realest you. So remember that you are so much more than just what you do. You are God's creation and you're loved and you are cherished for who you are. So this is me. Saying goodbye, signing off the Loop Show. Not as Reagan the 5'6 girl with brown eyes. This is Reagan, the person God created her to be. Bye, guys. A mirror can't generate its own light. It reflects whatever light is around it. You were made as a reflection of God. If I look at you, what would I see reflected? God or something else? Don't let anyone tell you that you were made for something else. You were made to shine the glory of God to the world around you. Get your light from the Lord and live as people of light. You are bright. As everyone knows, the fanciest of snacks is the charcuterie board. It's fruits, it's meats, it's cheeses, it's on a board. It's like an ornamental lunchable. Now a traditional charcuterie board looks like this. Ooh, Ooh. ah, wow. fancy. But we're gonna try to make ours into a work of art. I love it. All right, let's see what we've got. 
Oh! I have the Mona Lisa! And I've got that scream face. Ooh! This is the inspiration for that emoji that you send your friends. Ah, uh, all right, let's do it. <laughs> I'm gonna use my cashews first. Oh, that's a great idea. I remember that there's like some sky colors in there, so I'm gonna use some cheese. Ooh, good plan, good plan. I'm going for the pepperonis first. I love pepperonis. My go-to pizza topping is pepperoni and black olives. Fancier than you expected? It is very fancy. <laughs> yes. What kind of yeah. toppings do you like? Oh, the meats. <laughs> All the meats. All the meats. And there's these like strangers that are walking over here. They're like, hey, I'm a stranger. I think they probably wanted to be painted in there because they're like still standing there. I'm doing kind of a creative portrayal of the Mona Lisa because I'm not sure that I can do all the details of the background. There, are you gonna use any of your pretzels, but you I'm are. I'm using 100% of my pretzels. All the pretzels. All of them. Uh, I saw the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. It was much smaller than I anticipated. So surprising. Well, it's because things were smaller back then. Is that right? I don't know, probably. Oh my gosh, I'm making her eyebrows out of these cashews and it's pretty epic. <laughs> what is your favorite charcuterie? A s'more charcuterie board, no which way. is really hard to say. Can you say s'more charcuterie board? S'more charcuterie board. I can only say it like a pirate. S'more charcuterie, charcuterie board. board. See, that helps. It does. All right, let's see. I need a nose. Crackers and cheese. Oh, I need a smile. <laughs> Oh, you're eating some of your charcuterie board? Well, that's not a bad it's idea. It's the heart. Oh, that's what I should've done with the strawberry instead of like ripping it apart with my fingers. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to make her hand out of blueberries. Yeah, because I feel like for the smaller details, you have to have smaller items. There, I switched out her eyes for green olives. Classic. All right, what do you think about her blueberry hand? Uh, does it does it scream hand? <laughs> okay, still putting on some finishing touches, but before we show off our work of art, let's get some love from Pastor Sam. Yay, Pastor Sam! Let me remind you that God knew exactly what he was doing when he made you. So let's practice some self-love. I like this. So I need you to do me a favor. Everybody in here, go ahead and wrap your arms around yourself. Come on. If you're listening to this in your car, don't wrap your arms around yourself, okay? Do this later. But just go ahead and kind of sway to the side and just repeat after me. Say, me, I love you. You're amazing. You're doing great. I'm so proud of you. You're the best and I love you. Now, now some of you, that felt good, right? Some of you felt good, like I need, I need to practice some self-love. But for some of you, that was actually hard to say, let alone believe. Like to believe those things. And I want to remind you what Paul said about you. Scripture says we are God's what? Say it with me. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So what are you? You're God's masterpiece. You're God's workmanship. You are created for good works that he planned before you were even born. The word masterpiece comes from the word poema. And this is, the definition of this is a creation with a designated purpose, a workmanship, a masterpiece. This is where we get our word poetry from. So what are you? You're God's poetic statement. You're beautiful. You're valuable. You're custom designed like a good tailored suit. You're custom fit for what God created you to do. He created you with the purpose. God gave you the right personality, the right mindset. He gave you the right preferences and he gave you kind of the right things in your life to do the work that he wants you to do. You were born at the right time to do the good works that he created way in advance for you. You're his masterpiece. He planned these things for you to do. So when the devil tells you, God can't use you, Look at you, you're a mess. That's when you gotta shout back, I was a mess, but now I'm God's masterpiece. I'm his masterpiece. I am God's creation, he made me a work of art. I belong to Christ Jesus, now I'm gonna play my part. 
Gonna do the good Lord's good works that he prepared a long time ago. Gonna do the good Lord's good works so everyone will see and everybody will know that we are God's creation. We were made a work of art. We belong to Christ Jesus. Now we're gonna play our part. Gonna do the good Lord's good works that he prepared a long time ago. Gonna do the good Lord's good works so everyone will see and everybody will know that we are God's creation. We belong to Christ Jesus. Gonna do the good Lord's good works that He prepared a long time ago. Gonna do the good Lord's good works so everyone will see Him, everybody will know that I am God's creation. He made me a work of art. I belong to Christ Jesus. Now I'm gonna play my part. Here it is, our works of art. Take a look. Woohoo! I've got the Mona Lisa. So we have the pepperoni background. We have the crackers as her gown. We have pretzels for her hair, olives for her eyes, cashews for her face and neck, and then we've got strawberry for the coy little smile. I love it. Thank and you. And the blueberries? Is the hands. Perfect. Which I, I tried to make her fingers right here, if you can make that out. And I've got the screen boy. Ah! See, this so, is the sunset. Mm -hmm. These are the strangers in the photo. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the painting. And then that's the screen boy. There are his eyes, that's mm -hmm. his mouth, and that's his uh, cloak, I think. Mm -hmm. and these are all his food friends. <laughs> I really like yours because I feel like it's so detailed. Thank you. I love yours because you were able to capture that neutral Face. Like, is she yes. smiling? Is she smirking? Is yeah. it a straight face? I think that's mostly due to the strawberry. It, it was a perfect little sliver of strawberry. Okay, so this looks delicious, but is there any more artwork of us? Ooh. So I just got my haircut. Not not here, actually. It was over. It was uh, over here. Um, and I'm not, I'm not so sure about this cut. Let me show it to you. Ta-da! What do you think? How'd she do? You know, I think I need to style it a little bit differently, but I, I, I think it's pretty good. I think, uh, I think it kind of captures me, right? <laughs> I, I, I say that because I'm getting to a point that my haircut uh, doesn't define who I am. Here, let me show you. I've done, had some other haircuts. So I pulled out some yearbooks so you could see what uh, I looked like. Here uh, I have a, a frosted tips, so you can't tell, but those are dyed up there, blonde tips to my spiked hair. Here I have an afro. Uh, here I have dreadlocks, that was a thing. And then here I decided to cut it all off, but then I grew an, out a neck beard. So all of those felt like me. At the time, they really felt like me. You might not think that this guy should have a, an afro out to his shoulders, which that eventually grew into, uh, but that was, that was me at the time. Or so I thought. See, I, I, my tendency, I think all of our tendencies is to hold on to like, okay, uh, what have I done? Like, oh, I'm a straight A student, that's who I am. Uh, I play soccer really well, that's who I am. Uh, when I was in the fourth, up, up to fourth grade, I was always the tallest kid in my class and I thought that's who I am. And then I hit fifth grade and the girls started getting taller than me and it blew my mind because, because I had my identity. My world was rocked by something as, as superficial as how tall I was. And, and I, think, I think to scripture when, when the Bible says that, that God knows every hair on my head, like he knows the numbers of hairs on my head. He knows me so well. We're not defined by our fashion or by accomplishments or by how other people see us or how we compare to other people. We're defined by the God who created us. Before you had a name, God said, you're mine. Very page one of the Bible, he says that you're created in his image. So when life gets real, take a second, remember whose you are. Remember the God who designed you, created you. Doesn't, doesn't matter if, if, I don't know, you have to shave your head because you have lice. Uh, doesn't matter if you lose all of your teeth. You're still you. God created you. God knows you and sees you and chose you. Guys, I don't, I don't know what's going through your head, but, but to me, it gives me so much peace and confidence to know that what makes me me is the God who created me. And what makes you you is the God who created you. Just wow. Jamie is a work of art! Woo, look at my face! 
Nice. Look at that. I love these. This is so awesome. I do too. I love the shirts. Love the charcuterie board. It's great. Now, if you're ever feeling anxious about who you are, get real. God made the real you. You are his masterpiece. You're a walking, talking work of art. Be who God made you to be. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. And the charcuterie. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> hmm. Oh, speaking of amazing food combinations, you're going to want to check out the episode where we made the next chicken and waffles. <gasps> what was it? You got to watch the episode to find out. Ah, uh, yes. I wasn't there for that one. I will have to go and watch and enjoy. Yeah, and you watch it, and don't forget to subscribe. It's like a digital charcuterie.